5 Tips on Managing Your Anxiety and Stress at Your Job Number 1. What you're experiencing is genuine. When I first had an anxiety attack at work, I didn't ask to leave until I became physically ill. Mental symptoms didn't seem as palpable, significant, or real to me as physical symptoms did. Physical symptoms were the only thing that could validate my problems and make me feel less guilty and embarrassed about admitting that I needed help. Not only that but in the United States, anxiety disorders are the most common and pervasive mental disorders. Anxiety disorders affect as many as one in every five Americans, according to the National Institutes of Health. It's difficult to admit to flaws and give yourself some slack when you're at work, where you're expected to perform and be at your best. But keep in mind that your anxiety is real, just like a severe migraine or a severe stomach ache, and you deserve to take care of yourself in the same way you would if you had those physical ailments. Number 2. You will not be fired by your employer. The fear of being fired can be a major factor in having an anxiety attack at work. The good news is that you're unlikely to. The fear of being fired is a common component of the catastrophizing trusted source mechanism that characterizes workplace anxiety. However, if your worst-case scenario comes true, the law will be on your side. Number 3. Instead of fighting anxiety, work with it. Professor of Clinical Psychology at the University of Nevada in Reno, Stephen Hayes, a well-known figure in the field of mental health and, more importantly, a man who has experienced panic attacks advocates for a more self-compassionate and self-accepting approach to anxiety. Professor Hayes is the creator of Acceptance Commitment Therapy, which is one of the newest and most innovative forms of cognitive behavioral therapy, ACT. This type of therapy begins with accepting and observing negative thoughts in a neutral, non-judgmental manner, then moves on to bringing the client into the present moment and assisting them in leading a meaningful life. Number 4. Make Anxiety Your Buddy Kelly McGonigal, a health psychologist and internationally renowned speaker makes a similar case for a positive rethinking of stress. She explains in this talk that it's not so much the stress itself that's harmful, but the way we think about it. Instead of seeing stress as a foe, you can use it to your advantage. Stress and anxiety are simply signs that you care about something, and this care can be molded into something that greatly enhances rather than hinders your performance. For example, working as part of a news team in a fast-paced environment allows me to channel my anxiety into writing high-quality news stories that I deliver against the clock. When I was a teacher, I used to use my fear of speaking in front of a group to create upbeat, high-energy, and engaging classes. Number 5. Find what makes you happy. Yoga has been shown to reduce anxiety and stress, and this final thought is actually a quote from one of my favorite yoga instructors. People who suffer from anxiety are frequently perfectionists, overachievers, and people who, have been taught to, expect a lot of themselves. When you have anxiety, this makes things worse because not being at your best makes you angry at yourself, and punishing yourself is the last thing you need when you're at your weakest. However, it's important to remember that no one is perfect, and we all need to care for and nurture our flaws.